Hey guys, what's going on? Today we're going to cover the basics of boxing for you. So whether you're a traditional martial artist looking to get some hands or you're trying to get involved in mixed martial arts or kickboxing or Muay Thai or obviously boxing for that matter, we're going to go over some of the fundamentals you'll need for boxing. Now if you already got hands, I'm not talking to you. You're too experienced for this video. Stick around and watch it if you want to, but for you guys that are trying to get started, well let's get started. So first things first guys, the stance. We're going to start with our feet about shoulder width apart. Now if you're right handed, just follow along. If you're left handed, we'll just kind of flip everything around and do the opposite. So if you are right handed, we're going to call that an orthodox stance. If you're left handed, traditionally that is called southpaw. So from here, from this stance, we're going to take our left foot, our front foot again, if we are right handed, step forward with that front foot. So to keep it really relatively simple, front foot, one o'clock, back foot points at two. Twelve's right here, one, two, right? If you want to get a little bit more specific, bring that front foot in about 10 degrees, that back foot out about 30. Now you can get in trouble here. If, I see this all the time. If this back foot starts to point out like this, you're putting a lot of undue stress on that knee. Let's keep those toes angled but still essentially forward. Knees are going to be bent. From here, we want to take that back foot and we're going to kind of stab the floor with it. So again, good stance. This foot's flat. This is our brake pedal. This foot is going to be on the ball of the foot. This is our gas pedal. This is what's going to push us around the floor. Knees are bent like I'm sitting on a relatively tall bar stool, just barely supporting my weight. Hand position. Again, we make fists, pinkies rolling down to the index, tuck the thumbs across the top, a little slight curl on the wrist. Now, hand-wise, we always say hold your hands up. Problem with that is if you hold your hands up and then you gas out, and you see what's going on there. So what we want to do instead, Keep the elbows by the sides, make fists, and just bring our hands up. Now, obviously, I'm wide open a little bit still. What I'm going to do to resolve that is just shrug the shoulders a little bit, tuck the chin a little bit, and now I'm in that good, solid stance. All right, now that we have the stance down, we're going to go into some fundamental basic footwork. Again, back to my stance. General rule of footwork. Whatever direction I go, that foot's going to move first. If I go to the front, it's my front foot. Back, back foot, right, right, left, left. We always want to have two steps. We get where we're going, we correct our stance. So to move to the front, it goes front, back, front, back, front, back. Moving backward, back foot first. Closest foot to that direction. Back front, back front, back front. To go right, right, left, right, left, to go left, Left, right, left, right. Now, why stance so important? Put simply, it's your foundation. Bad foundation, everything's going to be bad up top. So when we're in this stance, if we do move the wrong foot at the wrong time, let's say we're moving our left to our right first, you obviously see the circus act right now. I'm on this tightrope. Especially in the world of boxing for MMA, Boxing for kickboxing, this lead leg gets kicked, you're gone for a ride. So we want to have that base a little bit wider. <clears throat> also moving forward, if we step with the wrong foot forward, we become too square. We're a much larger square target now. We're not as bladed. We're not defending our power side as much. All right. So good stance again, whatever direction we go, that foot moves first. Front back, back front, right left, left right. All right, guys, it's time to punch something but we're going to be punching the air. All right, so let's get back to that good stance. Hands are up, chins down, elbows in, protecting that body as well. So we're going to run through the six fundamental punches, at least what we consider the six fundamental punches here. So number one, the jab. My front hand is going to drive forward. As I drive that hand forward, I'm going to turn that hand down, kind of pronate that hand downward. And when I do, we don't want to hold the hand just straight. If you just look here, my hand straight, that's probably protruding the most. What we want to do is a little down and out, a little down and out. So we're hitting with those lead two knuckles. So I drive that hand forward, down and out. As I do that, back hand's got to make that phone call. I bring that back hand and I put my non-striking knuckles on my cheekbone there. I put a slight bend in my wrist so I have a built-in uh, shock right there. And also this back elbow, very important. Back elbow is going to stay right here. The liver's behind that. Trust me, you don't want to know yet. All right? Keep that back elbow protecting that liver. So we drive that front hand forward, 
drive that front hand forward, there's a little bit of a weight transfer to that front foot. Now, whenever we throw these punches, <clears throat> I want you to ask this question of yourself. Have you ever been pushed with a towel? Think about it for a second. Have you ever been pushed with a towel? Probably makes no sense because it doesn't make any sense. But ask yourself, have you ever been popped with a towel? All right, that's where we want to derive our power, our technique, our speed from, is a little bit of a snap. I don't want you going fast for the sake of fast, always technique first, but there needs to be a little bit of a snap with that punch. So don't push the punch. All right, from here, just stay loose and relaxed and just snap that punch. Just snap that punch out. Throw in the straight punch now. So we're going to take the back hand, drive it forward. We pronate and drive that hand inward. We extend those lead two knuckles. As we do that, this free hand is going to come up again to the cheek. Slight curl, shock absorber right here, elbow in, protecting the body. Drive that punch out. So it's essentially the same as the jab, but just with the power hand, except this big major difference right here. You have the back foot. You have the gas pedal. So when we drive that punch forward, we're going to squash your bug. We're going to out a cigarette. Do a little dance move. I don't care what you call it as long as you do it. We pivot that back foot so we extend our hips, drive our rear hip forward, create much more power in that straight right shot. I want you to also know this, notice this when it comes to both the jab and the straight. When I pronate that hand down, look at my chin right here. If I leave the hand upright, chin's a little exposed, and there's ways around it, but in general, as a beginner, if I rotate that shoulder should come up and I had, should have built-in defense in my punch. So again, good stance and straight right and bring it back. The lead hook, so good stance. Our jab, really quick, that's for our range finder, our distance management. It's our blind man's cane. Where are they at? Where are they at? There they are. Then that power shot can drop. Now the hook punch, there's a lot of ways to throw that hook punch and reasons to throw that hook punch. It's everybody's favorite punch, it seems. They just like lead hooks. I know I definitely do. And there's tons of ways to throw a lead hook. I could be trying to snap the punch really quick. I could be throwing kind of a fadeaway pull hook. Initially, right now, what we're going to show you is a power hook. The things I've seen people struggle with when throwing hook punches over the years are the hip mechanics. So we're going to focus on the hips and load the hips, then unload the hips to throw this punch. So from your stance, what we're going to do as we mentioned initially, 1 o'clock and 2 o'clock with the feet, we're going to take the belly button. Let's say it's pointing at about 2 o'clock. We're going to turn that belly button back to 10 or 11. Now from this 10 or 11 position, notice my back heel is up, my front foot's flat. If I just simply rotate my hips and then drop one and lift the other and transition back to 3 o'clock with my hips, I've turned my hips an awful lot to set up that punch or to derive power or create power in that punch. So again, we're back over at the 10, okay? We turn the hips to the three. Good stance, we're at about two o'clock. We go 10, three with the hips. 10, three with the hips. So we transfer the weight from the front foot to the back foot. From the front foot to the back foot. So the hips are a big problem for people when they're starting with the hook punch. So this is why I like this version to start off with in particular. Now what do we do with the hands? We're going to turn, hands are up, then I make basically a square with this hand. We'll just be really robotic about it right now. Good 90 degree angle, palm towards you, read the note, hide the note, pass that note to your buddy. So from here, we turn the hips back, we start to rotate the hips, this arm comes out in a bit of an arc. As we rotate the hips, big turn, boom, impact. Now notice where my punch is stopping at. I didn't dip all the way down in my pocket, okay? I rotate, hook punch, and I'm stopping at center line. Big mistake, punching through, missing, getting caught, getting slapped. You have to go back and watch the video to see what they hit you with. That's a bad thing. So from here, turn, unload, throw that hook punch. Good stance, load it up, boom, throw that hook punch. Now, man, they're going to see that punch coming. Yeah, they could. But if your punch doesn't have any power to it, it's kind of useless anyway, so we might as well improve the punch first. And also, if you want a good three, 
get a good two. A good two causes you to pivot that foot. So then if I'm pivoted and then I unload that foot, boom, that three is a natural progression right behind that two. And then if I've hit somebody with that two, that one, two, that two, and then they think it's that two, boom, it's that three, there's our setup for that lead hook. On to the power hook, guys. Probably the most least common punch thrown in boxing. But I've seen people get hit with it, so we need to know it and understand it. So good stance. We're going to take that back foot, start to squash that bug a little bit. It's almost like we got somebody holding our hand here. They're still holding that hand. Or a big rubber band holding that hand. Then all of a sudden, that rubber band's going to snap loose. And when it does, big looping circle with a good 90 degree angle, palm facing you. Again, reading that note, hiding that note, passing that note along, backhand up, protecting, elbow in. So again, we pivot that back foot, loop, throw that power hook punch. Almost visualize a, a pole right here in front of your face. The dude you need to hit right behind that pole. No sneaking, all right? Have some decency, all right? But with that being said, we rotate, we load that punch up a little bit. We go around that obstacle, land that right hand. Again, center line. No need to punch past center line. Bring that hand right back to you. Power hook. It's time to rock and roll. All right, it's a good stance. Rock and roll the uppercuts. The way I like to describe this to people, good stance, hands up. For the lead uppercut, we're going to rock to our lead side. Rock to our lead side. Don't do this. Don't rock back. All right. A little bit forward. Rock to that lead side. Now from here, take this lead hip and almost roll it in. Roll that lead hip forward. So rock, roll, and then extend that hand up as you drive that lead hip into that punch a little bit. Now I see this all the time with, with uppercuts when people first start. All right. Down here, uh, it's bow season right now. All right, so everybody rock, roll, and all of a sudden they get in that deer stand and they're holding this back hand like this. All right, you got to keep this elbow down or somebody will remind you by touching that liver for you. So rock, roll forward, elbow in, backhand up, lead uppercut. Rock, roll, <coughs> rock, roll, <coughs> lead uppercut. Now, when we throw this up, uppercut, no, I don't not all the way through, stop it at the chin, rock roll, lead uppercut. All right, guys, time to rock and roll on that power side. Hands up. We're going to rock to the right, forward a little bit. Again, weights on that back. Rock over to the side. Take this back hip, roll it forward. Roll that hip in. Notice how the hands just kind of stand tucked right into my body. And then right when it's time to snap that punch off, we rock, roll, boom, power uppercut. Rock, roll, power up for good. Rock, roll, power up for good. Make sure this hand is coming back to the face as always. Rock, roll, power up for good. Sixth punch we've shown you, so we call that our number six. 